If your videos are still shaky after applying the normal stabilization tool in DaVinci Resolve, then this video will be just for you. I will show you how to use the Fusion page in DaVinci Resolve's free version, so your future videos will look something like this. I will also give you a bonus tip at the end of the video to bring this technique together and make it look extra cool. Also, let me know if you want to create the speed ramp effect and I'll make a video about it. Let's get started. Okay, I'm in DaVinci Resolve 19 right now, the free version. And these are the two clips that we're working with today. Shout out to my beautiful wife. I'm gonna let them play and you can see for yourself how shaky they are. I have applied a speed ramp effect on top of them but they're just too shaky. So how do we fix that? Normally I would go to the right hand side to the stabilization tab, scroll down and hit stabilize, let DaVinci do its thing for the second clip as well. Okay, this is the result with the stabilization tool here. It's still shaky as you can see in some frames and the only thing that I could do right now is to increase the smooth and the cropping ratio which will introduce some cropping of course. As I'm gonna click stabilize you can watch the frame here. Yeah it's cropped in a bit. Um, let's do the same for this one here. Crop ratio, smoothing, stabilize. Let's render it out again. If you want clips to render just mark them, right click and render cache color output and then go up playback, render cache and on user. That's how I do it. Now let's see the result. It's not as shaky anymore but you can still see some jittery frames. I'm gonna reset the stabilization here and on this clip as well. I already created fusion clips, so if you want a fusion clip just right click on it, click new fusion clip. I have done it to both of them, they are fusion clips, so I'm clicking on the first one, go to the fusion page here and it should look something like that on your screen or maybe Maybe like that. I'm working in a different workspace, if you want to work with the same that I do just go on top workspace. Go to Layout Presets, Fusion Presets, Mid-Flow Vertical, that's my preset. And I don't have two screens here, I only have one, so I'm clicking on this symbol here. And now I'm grabbing this one here and pull it somewhere around here. So when you're first starting with this page, your nodes will be here, okay? You can press down on your scroll wheel while dragging your mouse and I'm gonna grab my media out. I like when my nodes are staying on the grid and for that right click on it and go to arrange tools and to grid. So now if I'm letting a node go it's gonna stay on the grid here, it just snaps on it. And it's a much cleaner workspace for me to work in. Now having the workspace out of the way, let's click on media in one, hold down shift and press spacebar and now look for the tracker. Add the tracker onto your notes. It should look something like that. This is the tracker here. I'm going to my very first frame here and how this tracker works. This square box is your tracker itself. You can click on the corner here and then just resize it the way you want. Down below where it says 0.1, this is your tracker. As you can see, if I'm making it bigger, and if you click this point here, you can move it around. So I'm grabbing the tracker, placing it on top of this bracelet here or stone. I don't know what it's called. This is the area where it's searching. So the bigger the square, the more your uh, computer will have to handle because it's searching everywhere. But in that case, I don't need a big of a square. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And before we're going to track it, here you have um, colors, RGB channels and I think luminance, is it? Yeah, it's luminance. And as you can see on the point one image, um, you should have a good contrasty point for the tracker to work properly. And for that you can switch for example to the red channel, black and white, okay, to the green and the blue. And if I'm clicking through them, I would say the, the red channel has a bigger contrast, as you can see the blacks here. So I'm gonna leave it at red. And since I have put my tracker here, I'm going up to the adaptive mode. I'm always using best match, um, personal preference and the best option from my experience. So I'm clicking on best match. I'm not changing anything. I'm just clicking on this here, it's track forward. You can track forward, so it's gonna start, track till the end 
and you can track backwards or you can just track one frame forward or backwards. And when I'm clicking on track forward, you can watch this square here. I'm always having my eye on this square because this is gonna be the live tracker, what it's doing in real time. So I'm gonna hit track forward and I'm watching. It's tracking, doing a great job, frame for frame for frame. I'm clicking stop here and hit yes. I'm still having all my tracking points as you can see. If you hold down control on your keyboard and scroll wheel up or down, you can zoom into your image. And while holding down your scroll wheel, just like on the notes, you can place the image where you want or the video footage. If I'm scrubbing through, these are all the points here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. It's doing a really good job. This is the last one here. So I'm gonna start from this one again. And if I want the real time viewer to be a bit faster, that means the tracker should be faster. And how do you track faster with the searching square to be not that big? So if I'm gonna put it somewhere around here and I'm gonna track forward, you can see it's gonna be much faster. Sometimes it's losing it. If it's losing, just hit stop scrub through and if it lost a point somewhere just go back one frame resize it and i'm clicking track forward again so i'm gonna let it track as you can see it's not that precise my point was somewhere up here since i only want to track this object i really don't care if the tracker is somewhere up here at the end of the video or down here as long as it's somewhere around here and of course if the tracking point jumps from here and the next frame it's down here uh, that is not a good job so the tracker should smoothly follow the stone i'm gonna let it track now and i'll see you guys in one second okay we are back the tracker tracked 335 frames these are all the points i started somewhere right in the middle of the stone and in the middle i was already at the wow, at the very edge of the stone but for the sake of this tutorial i'm just gonna leave it like that of course i could go back and rearrange the tracker and all that but it's fine it never left the stone and at the end it was in the middle again it's okay it's totally fine so i'm zooming out and now for the tracker to be applied on your video you have to go to the operation tab on the tracker on the operation click on match move and on the merge click on bg only which means background only boom filter method everything i'm just gonna leave it like that and now as you can see there's a grayed out square on each and every single frame not on every frame sometimes it's spot on but as you can see when i'm scrubbing through on every frame there are like these grayish blocks and how do we fix that? Easy, click on the tracker one, hold down shift and press spacebar. And now search for transform. Go to this transform tool, hit add. And in the transform node, just zoom with the slider here, zoom up until there are no grayish blocks visible, okay? And scrub through, okay, here are still some blocks, so I'm zooming in. The good thing is I used 4K footage, so I can crop in a bunch. And I'm scrubbing through, can I see some grayish blocks? No, I can't, perfect. I'm pressing play, and as you can see, bother smooth stabilization let's do the same for this clip here right click i don't have to create a new fusion clip because it is already one as you can see so i'm clicking on it go to the fusion page and i'm gonna go to the very beginning on the media one hold down shift space bar search for tracker add it go to adaptive mode best match don't forget that i want to track the phone because it's right in the center i could use the color but i'm gonna use the red green or blue red there's such a good contrast here as you can see my searching point can be small the tracking as well because there's so much contrast so i'm just gonna let it track right now track forward this one is fast as you can see in the preview look at the frames 30 40 frames tracked 50 frames it's not losing the phone 60 70 and wait if i'm gonna hit stop i don't have to it was perfect track almost perfect of course nothing is perfect but as you can see my lens is not that good because it's always getting out of focus but whatever i just wanted to show you that okay so track forward again boom doing a good job not losing the phone in any frame whatsoever so that's what we wanted it's a really fast tracking right now perfect 
So 150 frames tracked. And now what we do, of course, go to operation, match move, background only, zooming out, searching for the great blocks. There are a bunch of them as well. How do we fix that? Shift, spacebar, transform, this transform here. You can use the other one as well, I think, but I'm always using this transform here. And zooming in 4K footage, we can zoom in even more. Go back to my timeline render it go back to the beginning this is what we came up with with this stabilization technique oh that's so dope now what we could do for a boomerang is select the two clips right click new compound click create hold down alt click on it hold and drag it to here so we're gonna copy and paste it or duplicate it the in and out point you can hit i at the very beginning boom and then o here there's one frame too much so i'm just gonna drag it hit the loop here so it's gonna loop and i'm gonna right click on this here go to clip speed reverse speed and now i'm gonna go to the very beginning select everything render it let da vinci render it out and here's our boomerang that's so dope and now for the bonus tip, as you can see, it's still a bit wobbly on the edges here. Not that much, but it's visible. And how do we fix that with some sort of a motion blur? So I'm going to select the two clips, right click, make a new fusion clip. And here search for optical flow and now another node and search for vector motion blur here. Add it and now decrease the scale to about 0.345. I'm gonna do 0.44. Now go back to your timeline and render it out. If I'm gonna go frame by frame, as you can see, when there's camera movement, the wobble will be not as visible since there's some sort of a motion blur. So I'm gonna play it on loop and here's what we came up with. This method is not as fast as the normal stabilization, but with this knowledge, you're able to create some cool looking edits. And if you want to help a small creator out, consider giving this video a like and visit my shop. With that being said, stay safe out there and I'll see you in the next one.